I met my husband in high school at a teen dance, and we just stayed together through high school, through college. Um, I was 20 years old when I married him, and we just had a wonderful life together being good friends. We were just really, really good friends along with um, a deep love for one another. My husband and I actually met at my job. This was about almost nine years ago at Lens Crafters, and he came in to buy glasses. And to this day, he's never bought a pair of glasses. But <laughs> it kind of worked out because he just kept coming back. And um, like we built a friendship, and then we just realized we had a lot in common and a lot of the same goals. And then that friendship kind of turned into a relationship. Now we've been married five years and we have two kids. Well, I grew up in Bellevue, Kentucky. So I'm just an old Kentucky boy. I've had some great experiences, all the development in Northern Kentucky on the south bank of the Ohio River uh, became of great interest and because that was my, the title of my job. It's been an interesting journey and uh, I've enjoyed uh, every single second of it. Right now I'm just living happily with my wife in retirement. My husband, he was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer and was recommended that he had chemotherapy and radiation therapy. He was seeing um, an oncologist that was not with Christ Hospital at the time, and he just became weaker and weaker as time went on. And it was very difficult going there with him because it was almost like he was treated like a number and not a person. But I thought, this is the way it's supposed to be. The doctors are so busy, they don't have time to really treat the individual. He passed away three months after his diagnosis. I actually was diagnosed with colon cancer um, in 2010, just before Gary was diagnosed with the lung cancer. Um, the surgery went well. At that time, I was seeing the same oncologist that my husband saw, and it was determined that the um, colon cancer had metastasized to my liver. So I originally found my lump doing a um, self-breast exam. The biopsy was actually what confirmed that I had stage two breast cancer. And from that point, it was time to have the referrals to an oncologist. It was a morning that I remember very well that my wife said, uh, there's a little blood in your shirt. And she said, you better go see a doctor about that. And I did. It was a family doctor. And he looked at me and said, well, you have a, a bad mole on your back. And I'm going to cut it out. And of course he did. And when he came back, he said, it appears to be melanoma. The surgeon never once looked inside of me. There was never an x-ray. There was never a CAT scan never an MRI, it was just a feeling and looking at the outside of my body and doing that every three months. And before I knew it, I started having pains in my back. I learned later that that melanoma that was discovered early on had metastasized. It was three years later now. The news was bad in that I might live through the spring. That's only six months away. I realized I needed to make a change. So I started asking around and actually the attorney that handled my husband's estate had had colon cancer and went to Dr. Bendari. And he just spoke so highly of him. So I went to visit Dr. Bendari and immediately on meeting him, I knew that I had found the right place for my treatment. I could see it in his eyes. Um, I felt his compassion, his concern, and all of my uneasiness was just settled momentarily meeting him. I have many wonderful things to say about Dr. Cody, but immediately what I think my husband and I liked about him was he was just so willing to be there for us, answer any questions. I mean, our first visit, I think we stayed maybe 30 minutes or longer just talking to him. I didn't know what to do exactly. Two days later, I was in the office of Phil Lemming. My melanoma had metastasized by this point into stage four. 
It was almost a death sentence. But Dr. Lemming created this comfort for me that I didn't feel like it was that it was bad, but something that we could work through. And we did that together. So um, I had the surgery and um, under Dr. Bendari's care, seeing him every three months, um, I'm here today to tell my story. I'm in remission. And so it's actually helped me find my true purpose in life, which is helping women and their families or those impacted by cancer get through this. One year, I became so encouraged uh, about all these uh, good things that were happening. I said, let's enjoy the, the rest of our lives as best we can. And so I took the, the, our kids and our grandkids and flew them down to Disney in Orlando. That's the kind of thing that inspires you. Faith can get you through a lot of problem areas. And then good doctoring, of course, is key to the whole process, too. And Dr. Lemming and the people he's referred me to are so important. Keeping hope in your life. Uh, all these combined can make a success story out of something that could have been fatal. Now that I feel I have been given a second chance, um, my whole perspective in life has changed. Where I used to maybe sweat the small stuff, I don't do that anymore. Um, every day, every minute is precious. Your hopes, your dreams are, are kind of shattered. Uh, and then all of a sudden something comes along and gives you a little more hope. And that hope keeps you going. Each morning when I wake up, I'm so grateful that I'm here for my children and for my grandchildren. And um, I just find joy in, in every day, knowing that I'm, I'm here, I'm alive, I've conquered this. Sometimes when everything in life looks like it's falling apart, that's really the universe's way of making everything fall into place. It's all gonna work out, you just gotta have faith.